saying, I tell you. I was going to put it under new business, but but given the client. <laughs> It's against the law for you to approach Commissioner Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading it now. I'm, <laughs> I'm robotic. <laughs> I thought we pulled this. Did we pull this little? Call of Education meeting is hereby convened. Uh, please stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by uh, Commissioner Brennan. <laughs> To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. President. Yes, uh, Commissioner Evans. May I have a uh, point of uh, personal privilege, please? A point of personal privilege is granted. Uh, I would ask that um, all of my colleagues join me down by the podium with the uh, exception of um, President Garcia and uh, former President um, Shirley Thompson. This is their last meeting today, and we want to um, give a short uh, presentation down at the podium. Line. Um, f first off, I, all of us uh, on the board probably um, really appreciate um, the, the service that board members um, provide. I know that after four years, um, this is not an easy job. The amount of time it takes away from uh, your families, the amount of time it takes away from your job at times is sometimes daunting. It's, it's not easy to um, serve on the Board of Education and Commissioner Thompson who has served um, for eight years, she said eight is enough <laughs> after that, and um, President Garcia who has served with distinction and honor for four years. So we have um, two plaques on behalf of the Board of Education, um, one to, to President Domingo Garcia and to Shirley Thompson. I'm going to ask um, Commissioner Elliott <laughs> to uh, present <laughs> the plaque to, uh, to uh, President Garcia. They, they've come a long way over uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you from, from my, my first um, dealings with him over the past two years and, and, and has really um, <laughs> developed a strong relationship, and they're going to miss each other. So I'll ask, uh, <laughs> so I'll ask uh, Commissioner Elliott to present this one, and then I will present uh, Commissioner Thompson. <laughs> As you all know, um, we didn't get along. <laughs> um, you know, I thought he was a, too procedural minded and missed, missed the point of the spirit of, of, the, of, the, of the law and the spirit of the intent. And um, you know, we've had some battles and you know we both are uh, pretty strong minded when it comes to our positions. Uh, but it never was personal for me never has been personal. And um, this is about our children. Um, I think that in terms of his presidency, um, he kept it in order a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, <laughs> uh, but he kept it in order. Uh, he has been uh, an asset to this community. He probably doesn't know, but I remember him from the fight organization and when he was at Ibero American Action League. Uh, I remember when he was with Franklin Florence and Minister Scott and David Gant and all the people um, that helped to make our community a better community for all of us. They fought for this. They fought on the line. And so it gives me great pleasure 
uh, to be in the fight with President Garcia and to probably about 30 years, at least 35 years for me and, and certainly longer for President Garcia to continue this work on behalf of this community and now on behalf of our children. And so uh, I would like to say to uh, President Garcia, Mr. Domingo Garcia, thank you from the board and from the district in grateful recognition and appreciation of the leadership and dedication you provided the Rochester Board of Education from 2004 through 2007. And it gives me great pleasure thank to you. give you this. <laughs> I, um, I want to thank my colleagues, the board commissioners, the board members, uh, for having more patience with me than I did with them. <laughs> I know, I know they thought that I was difficult, and I thought they were difficult, but, um, but they had a lot of patience, uh, and they worked well, and they were always uh, uh, upfront and respectful, and I, and I appreciate the sincerity that, that, they, that they gave me. You have a good board, you're going to have an even better board uh, coming on in January. I want to particularly thank the staff at the central office and in the district for all the hard work they have done on behalf of our children. I'd like to thank the staff for being respectful and hardworking and providing us with the information we needed uh, to make uh, relevant decisions for the district. I know at times we didn't think you provided enough and you thought you provided too much, but there has to be a balance there somewhere. Nevertheless, I, appre I appreciate your professionalism in dealing with the board and, and making sure that we were always in tune to what was going on. I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for all of that hard work. Thank you. And now I'll have uh, Commissioner Powell, who has served probably the longest with Commissioner um, Thompson, former President Shirley Thompson, uh, present her plaque. Thank you, Malik. I'll wait till Shirley gets down here. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I didn't have prepared remarks because um, Cynthia's introduction to Domingo made me think that, you know, Shirley and I, we didn't always get along either. I bet you never knew that. <laughs> because we, I mean, and, and it's true, we didn't always get along. We were served as president and vice president together one year. That's that was right. enough. <laughs> okay? But hopefully we did not project that to the community at all. What we did do together was work extremely hard on a couple of policies, the parent involvement policy, one that there was at least one point where we distinctly disagreed and we were not agreeing to disagree. We mm -hmm. struggled with it for two years, a full year in committee and then a full year in the community with community conversations. Mm -hmm. And then we worked very, very hard on the schools of choice policy, one where we did agree. However, the details of it got us mired to the place where we were talking about it for a year mm -hmm. and turned that over to the administration to talk about mm -hmm. for a year. So we've We've tackled what I think together were some of the biggest issues that the district faces. We did it with a spirit of genuine caring about what each other thought and making every effort really to understand each other and make whatever accommodations we really felt that we could make. So with that, Ms. Shirley Thompson, thank you. In grateful recognition and appreciation of the leadership and dedication you provided the Rochester Board of Education from the year 2000 to 2007. Uh, 2007. Thank you, Shirley. Thanks.
Thank you, Willa, and thank you to my colleagues. I'm going to ask you to have a seat because my remarks won't be quite as brief <laughs> as Domingo's. <laughs> Um, I heard two people being interviewed together on the radio the other day. I forgot to bring my tissues with me, but I'll, I'll get by. Uh, one interviewee sounded pretty quiet compared to the other, and it occurred to me that I've been pretty quiet during my tenure when it comes to public comment, both verbal and, and written. So tonight, I decided that I should share with you everything I haven't said over these past eight years. Does anybody really think I'm serious? <laughs> Every, everything? <laughs> You're all so polite sitting there, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not going to take that long, um, but I did have to put my remarks in writing, and then they're really not too lengthy, um, because I do tend to get teary when it comes to goodbyes and partings. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will help me uh, keep that tendency in check. First of all, Leaving the uh, school board at this time was not unplanned. When I was elected in 1999, I knew then that I wouldn't do it for more than two terms because I never expected to make this a career. I considered doing just one term, but figured it might take me that long to learn the ropes. And uh, I don't know if I have yet, but I said at least one term, but no more than two. Back in 99, I'd been involved with the community and the schools for 16 years since my family's return to Rochester in 1983. And what I initially suspected, and what's been confirmed for me at least over these eight years, is that the average person with average intelligence can do this job. What I've discovered, though, is that it takes more than intelligence. It takes more than experience. It takes intelligence, experience, and everybody comes with their own set of experiences and it takes the right personality. In my opinion, only one or two of the qualities will still leave a, a person coming up short. Now, in terms of my personality, I was born in New York City, Harlem Hospital. Spent my first 10 years down there going to public schools, PS 186. <laughs> and, uh, and as a city girl, I've never really doubted my overall toughness. Although in my younger years, I, I do recall making sure that other people knew how tough I was. But um, maybe as a result of participating in and living through the civil rights movement with all its heroes, big and small, as a result of the spiritual journey I've taken over my 57 years, and definitely as a result of observing and interfacing with a wide range of people and groups, both close up and personal and from a distance, I've come to try to live a life that embraces learning, works for what's fair, that acknowledges differences, and works in respectful enough a manner so that as we wrestle with the inevitable differences, the door remains open, open enough for us to reach solutions together. And oh yeah, the life I try to lead, lead has to contain a sense of humor. Um, now in terms of experience and experiences, I've had some of both. One reason I agreed to run for the board was because I had developed experience in specific areas and I had a bit of life experience under my belt by then. One of the things I love about life is that every single day, every single moment presents us with the chance to open ourselves up to new experiences, to grow from them, and to also bring our life's lessons to bear in any given situation. And I'm really excited about the prospect of new experiences in my after the board life. Now, the, the last attribute, intelligence. Can you pass my, um, my, my bag out to me? There's a book inside my bag under there. You'll see a thick book. If you could just pass that to me. Intelligence. I will readily admit that I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm a work in progress always. But I never believed I had to have, thank you, all the answers. No one has them all. One of the roles I felt I could serve on the board was that of a cross-pollinator, sharing 
with stakeholders on the board and the district and across the community the ideas and solutions that other stakeholders had already come up with. I'd been around long enough to understand that we really don't have to reinvent the wheel. Well, it's the height of irony that in my last week on this job, after all the trial and error of on-the-job training we go through, that I would be introduced to the writings of John Carver. He's produced the third edition of Boards That Make a Difference, a new design for leadership in nonprofit and public organizations. I want you to bear with me while I read a couple of short ex excerpts from his book. Quote, in my consulting work with a multitude of boards and chief executives, I have found a great deal of cynicism and resignation. Knowledgeable skeptics think boards can never get beyond being spoon-fed by their executives and that because of their nature, boards must remain fundamentally reactive. With good evidence, many people believe that boards will always stumble from rubber stamping to meddling and back again. They believe the realities of group decision-making forever destined boards to be incompetent groups of competent people. My impressions, too, the authors, <coughs> are just as dismal. But I believe the cynicism is justified only so long as boards continue to be trapped in an inadequate design of their jobs. Mr. Carver says, board members are as conscientious and, are, and as giving a group as one could ever hope to find. Members of volunteer boards and underpaid public boards interrupt their personal and occupational lives to support something in which they believe. There's not adequate space, he says in his book, to give sufficient credit to the works wrought by board members in any given community in one year. The personal drive of board members has accomplished formidable tasks. The perseverance of board members has surmounted seemingly intractable barriers. The patience of board members has outlasted drudgery. The generosity of board members has made the impossible possible. He continues, and I know this will resonate with my colleagues, board members arrive at the table with dreams. They have visions and values. In many cases, their fervently held beliefs and sincere desire to make a difference impel them to board membership in the first place. Symphony board members want to improve community culture. City council persons want to include, include, increase the benefits of citizenship. School board members want to prepare children for life. He continues, much as board members and executives unintentionally conspire to water down the powerful work of genuine governance, they often have a nagging awareness that something is not quite right. Concern is often expressed as complaints about time spent on trivial items, time spent reading reams of documents, meetings that run for hours and accomplish little, committees that are window dressing for what staff members want to do, meddling in administration, reactivity rather than proactivity, confusion about what's going on, rubber stamping of staff recommendations. Does it sound familiar? <laughs> it fits so many school boards and other bodies to a T. Finally, Mr. Carver says, <coughs> In these pages, I argue for dissatisfaction with what we now accept as ordinary and outline a path that boards can follow to become extraordinary. The failures of governance are not a problem of people, but of process. The problems lie squarely in our widely accepted approach to governance, virtually all aspects of the board management partnership. This book is a strong indictment of what is, but it's intended to make a compelling case for what can be. It's the end of his quotes. I bring this up tonight to say to the board that will be seated in 2008 that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I know that most of the school board members I've served with and have known feel the words I just read. We have known and people in this community who care about our children in schools have known that there are caring, experienced, intelligent, committed people on our Board of Ed. And this committee wants you to be successful. So my parting gift to each of the 2008 Board of Education members 
and our incoming superintendent will be their own copy of boards that make a difference. And if all goes as planned, you'll each receive it by next Friday. I believe in you, and so do so many other people, armed with the right tools and the willingness to use them. You can take this school district and this community to the heights that it can attain. Let me begin my thank yous, my list of thank yous, um, first to the board. Thank you. It has been a challenge, no doubt, <laughs> but it's also been an enriching experience and one that I'll continue to savor and learn from as I process it. Thanks to uh, Bill Calla. You came in and did what we asked, and you're taking your leave, but not without my gratitude. And I can't close without saying thank you to the members of Central Office who have worked alongside the board to assist me personally and the board collectively. In many cases, I've come to know the uh, superintendent's employees, especially the confidential secretaries, um, like they were board staff. And once we, once you, get the board administration relationship right, there'll be no stopping this district. I can't say enough about the Board of Education staff. Where are you guys? Yeah, yeah. These are the people. You're busy typing, but I'm also talking about you, Linda, <laughs> and the other staff. <laughs> These are the people who have been in the thick of it in many ways. They've worked to help the board carve out a meaningful identity to be effective and efficient. They've been our eyes, ears, and representatives, making us look good and be better when we couldn't do that for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And I feel a tremendous amount of gratitude to the community that allowed me to serve for these eight years. The people who emailed and wrote and called me because they believed in my ability to help them. The people who stopped me in the street to talk with me about a decision of mine or to let me know they had voted for me and to keep up the good work. Thank you. And my family. I can't find the words to express my deep love and appreciation for you. My family has supported me from day one in ways that are just too numerous to mention. I can only try to express my appreciation and the quality time and the quantity of time we're going to spend going forward. Um, <laughs> I, I need to ask my, my husband, Jim, to stand up to just be acknowledged. <laughs> he has been my rock and my son. He's representing my children and in-laws and grands. my eldest, our eldest, Erin. Thank you. And as much as I'm eager to be with my family, it's going to be hard to let go of this life. Um, so I've tried to think of ways to kind of ease myself away. I, I have, we receive our Friday packets in these envelopes, and so I'm leaving some addressed with my name. And you don't have to put anything in them, but <laughs> just send them to me over the next few Fridays. <laughs> You know, and, and, and that will help. Um, we've managed to, somehow the uh, board staff has managed to get everyone's cell phone and they've put my number on speed dial. So when you feel you need to reach out to me, you just hit the speed dial on your cell phone. And um, unfortunately, I've learned that even former board members aren't allowed to place electronic bugs in the conference room, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, finally, for those of you who want to know what I'm going to do with all this extra time, let's see, I'm going to rejoin the community. I live up in the 14621. They call it the hood, the crescent. We're going to return it to being a neighborhood. I'm going to, I'm going to do a lot more karaoke. I have missed it immensely. I'm going to clean my house more. I'm going to hang out with my grandkids. I'm going to return to school. My first two years in college showed me I was not ready for prime time, so 40-something years later, I'll be heading back. I'm going to do some leisure reading. Did I mention I'm going to do karaoke? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to process this experience um, 
and I'm going to thank you again all for the role you've had in this journey. Thank you so much. We have one more thing to do. I would like you to get up and help me give Bill Kala a big thank you for the work he has done with the district. You know, um, when we were looking for an interim super, superintendent, uh, it was no easy task. We wanted a superman. We wanted somebody to come in and do what needed to be done and, and be willing and able and ready to do it no matter what. And we knew that it was going to be difficult working for seven people. Uh, and we decided that uh, Bill Kala was the man who could do that. I didn't know Bill Kala from a bag of beans, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I came, I have come to respect and, and admire Bill for, for his openness, his uh, clarity of vision, his leadership, his ability to work with people of all kinds, all, all types, the ability to see good in everyone and, and, and try to, to get the goodness out of people. Uh, I admire Bill. I, I've come to admire Bill. I, uh, you know, I, I always, I'm, I'm always looking for people who I, I would like to be like. And I tell my kids, don't be like me, Bill. Like, be like somebody else, who, somebody that you can admire. And if you admire me, that's fine. But try to find other people that, that you think you can emulate throughout your lifetime. In any case, we uh, have a plaque for Bill uh, in appreciation for uh, the work he has done and the leadership that he's provided to the district. And he said, presented by the Board of Education of the Rochester City School District in appreciation of your service to the students, parents, staff, and community in 2007, December 20, 2007, by the Board of Education. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much, Thank you. I wasn't expecting this, so uh, I, I didn't put anything on paper, uh, Shirley. <laughs> I want to thank Board, I want to thank all of the community for giving me the opportunity to work for the children in this district. I don't have much more to say than that because it's, it's all about kids and it's all about working for the children and everything that we need to do. And if the only one message that I could possibly leave is that to the new board, to all of the staff here, every move we make, every decision that we make has to be with children in mind and for no other reason. If it doesn't have kids in mind. If it isn't for the benefit of kids, we shouldn't be doing it. So I thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I, I think I got more out of this than, than, uh, than you did. So I, I truly appreciate that. Uh, my wife and I, I want to thank my wife for putting up with all this back there. Say hello, Joanne. <clears throat> um, at, we will be leaving for back for Kenya on February 10th and uh, we look forward to that and working with the children over there. We won't, I'll never forget you and uh, I will leave all of my, uh, my personal uh, information with everyone so that we can stay in touch. So thank you very much again. Well, thank you for your indulgence. President Garcia, yes. I wondered if, if uh, we can ex spare a few other minutes for some of us on the board who may want to also share their uh, um, 
love and support of Dr. Calla and, and well wishes. Of course, my last day. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Brennan. Um, I was going to do this in the policy committee report, but uh, I suppose I can, I can embarrass him now. Um, and, just, and, and Domingo, I know you don't want the meeting to ever end. So if it doesn't adjourn you, you stay in power. But uh, no. Um, First of all, there's, two, there's no, no two more decent people in this community um, than Shirley Thompson and Domingo Garcia. And when they leave this board, you'll be losing an extraordinary measure of, of experience and integrity and decency. They're remarkable people. Their years of service in this community, their civility, their integrity has been, is going to be difficult to replace and it will be greatly missed. Um, now, the policy committee <laughs> um, actually um, did not meet last month. It has not met since since. Um, not in the reports yet. Right. So there's so there so as Rob Brown used to say, the board is and he was my predecessor as chair of the policy committee. He used to say that the board is fundamentally a policy making body, and therefore, when the policy committee doesn't meet, the harm that that can be done to the school district is, is greatly limited and the district is, is safe from it. Um, so <laughs> that's good news. But there, Dr. Calla has been an unusual assistance to the policy committee. And everybody that's interacted with that committee, um, almost to the point of being ridiculous, has conveyed this. And he's done many good things. His tenure here has been a brief interim tenure, but historic and deeply meaningful um, to us and to the community. And I think the best thing he did, and he did many good things, was to reach out to people in this community and simply give a listen, simply be accessible, which required an extraordinary amount of energy and patience. And it's a very simple thing, but to give people, to alleviate people's sense of, of hopelessness and helplessness about whether they even had access to the decision-making process in this district. And on that basis alone, he will never be forgotten by us, and it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing. Now, Shirley has sort of, has already started out by handing out books, but when I first, my father was a teacher, and when I first decided to run for the school board some 27 years ago, um, he, it, several months before he died, he gave me a book that he said ought to be read by every mayor, every school board member, every school superintendent. And the book was Babbitt by Sinclair Lewis. And he's, he's smiling because I think he, he recognizes that this is a book about um, a humorous look at, at mediocrity and mindless conformity in community leadership. And um, this is a book that my father gave me shortly before he died, just as I began my um, um, long period of, of school board service over the years. And I would like him to have it as he goes back to Africa, and I want to give this to him right now. I promise to stay on this side of the dais. <laughs> I'm touched. I really am. Thank you. Um, I thought I was going to be able to do this without tears, but... Um, if many of you may know that when Dr. Kayla first came on, that I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't think a white man from the suburbs could come into this district. You know, what did he have to offer the district is, was my uh, first thoughts. And what I discovered was a man who loved children. And if you have a love for children, nothing else really matters. He comes with the competence of having run a, uh, been a superintendent in, in another district. So he comes with the skill set. But even if you have that, if your driving force is not children, you're not going to have the impact. And we all know that Dr. Kayla has had that kind of impact. I've been in this community more 35 years working in, on behalf of children and families, particularly in the inner city.
I have never seen the kind of outpouring that this community has had for Dr. Kayla and for the work that he has done. I remember when I was running for this office, people would say to me, good luck. You know, that's a big nut to crack. You know, the, 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 the issues are insurmountable in the district. Well, when, we came, when I came on board, we began to discover they're not so big. And as we continued on this path in the district, we see that things began to get better. They began to get better. Questions were starting to be asked. And then we brought on Dr. Kayla, who I didn't support. And I'm proud to say that I was wrong. And I thank him. Um, I would say to you, Mrs. Kayla, you have someone else that loves him. Uh, I appreciate what he's accomplished for this district, for this community. And, you know, I, as I said to, uh, to Jean-Claude, you know, he's, he's got a standard to live up to. And, uh, you know, I've got Dr. Kayla's number, so, you know, just stand by. <laughs> so um, um, I just, uh, I know your love is for Africa and for Kenya and for the work that you and Mrs. Kayla is doing there. Um, but know that our hearts are with you and Mrs. Kayla um, and much success in the work that you're doing in Africa. And uh, I just love you and uh, glad that, that I've gotten to know you and what you've done for our district. Thank you so very much. We're starting from that end. Oh, see, he didn't tell me you were going to do that. Um, I, a couple things. Uh, I'll follow, follow uh, Commissioner Brennan's lead. First, uh, there aren't going to be any adequate words that I can express about uh, Domingo and Shirley, um, except to say that uh, he will be missed. And I hope and pray, although Domingo, you're going a bit of distance away, we'll have some opportunity to communicate down there. And quite frankly, uh, being the most junior member here, I have not had the opportunity to have the contact that I would like to have had with both of you. Uh, you both are very strong uh, role models. And uh, different, too, by the way. And I think true leaders learn from other leaders. And I regret that I'm not going to have an opportunity to learn more from the both of you. Uh, Bill, um, it was short but sweet. Uh, sweet not so much in terms of what you're able to accomplish internally, because the time you were given was indeed brief. But uh, more significantly, to be quite honest, I think your biggest impact was outside the walls of the school. Uh, and I would concur with uh, Commissioner Elliott uh, and Commissioner Brennan that you instilled in the community a belief that leaders can listen first and then lead. Most significantly, I think what can be said about your leadership is, can be summarized in one word, and Commissioner Brennan used this word, accessibility. I think one of the reasons why you are, and I don't think this is an exaggeration, you are so beloved in this community, is one, to be honest, your tenure was short. I'll be honest. Because with time does come bitterness. But, but more importantly, but more importantly, I think the reason why people uh, care for you and believe for you so much, because you opened doors which were previously perceived to be closed. And when you do that as a leader, that is the most important thing you can do. And, uh, and I don't say this in any disrespect to Jean-Claude, but if he does, and I suspect he will, don't get me wrong, if he doesn't follow your lead, he will be making a big mistake. You have established some very big shoes. He's a big guy. I'm sure he can fill them. But uh, you have established some very big shoes, and I think... Uh, we all are the beneficiaries of your leadership. And as I said with Domingo and Shirley, there may have been votes or conversations which people had that make you think, that may have made you think that I personally did not want you around. But Bill, just like I said about Domingo and Shirley, I wish and I hope and I pray I have more of an opportunity to learn from you as time goes on. Godspeed. Thank you very much.
I'm going to send a power. Yeah, I always struggle with what's appropriate to say and what's not. I did already give my thanks and gratitude to Commissioner Thompson. I honestly can't think of anything to add to it. And uh, Domingo, um, it's been an absolute p pleasure. Um, I'm sorry you're going all the way to Florida. Mrs. Garcia, I guess you're probably wise to go all the way to Florida. <laughs> uh, if I were younger and single, I'd have a crush on him, I have to tell you. Um, um, see, you there, you never know what's appropriate to say until it's already slipped out of your mouth. Uh, I don't know what I can add to what's already been said, Dr. Calla. Um, you know that uh, my vote for you was predicated on a commitment to um, clean house, help us start on, in a new direction, especially here in central office, and that mission was accomplished, and I thank you. Um, and a marvelous thing happened when it was announced that you were joining us. The community collectively sighed. And they all said, my God, the school board can actually make a good choice. And then the bloom fell off the rose because folks really didn't believe we could do it twice. And uh, I think that we are starting to see it within the community a belief that yes, our next choice was every bit as good as the first choice. So these are the moments in our, uh, our career as school boards that um, vindicate us, I think, and I do thank you for the time that you gave us, most especially because of that sigh that came with your arrival, that opportunity for the community to look at us and say, they're not a bunch of idiots after all. And, uh, um, you know, my ego can take that kind of criticism because sometimes it, it seems like we deserve it, but the community suffers a great blow when it continually um, denigrates its school boards, its city councils, its mayors, whatever governing body. And uh, it, it's been very refreshing to spend a little time on the board with people giving us the benefit of the doubt, and I appreciate that. That's something that you singularly brought to us. Thank you. Commissioner Evans. Um, thank you uh, again to President Garcia and uh, Commissioner Thompson for their years of service. They will be um, greatly missed, as I said earlier. Um, to Dr. Calla, one of the most important things um, of his tenure that I remember most is um, our Friday morning meetings, and there are always being pretzels, hot balls, and uh, candy on the table. I'm, I'm, thank you for bringing that into the conference room on a regular basis. I hope John Claude continues that same, uh, that same tradition. But, but seriously, uh, th thank you for your service. I, I, I want to say that I think that this community um, benefit has been a, was, was a direct benefactor of um, the openness that you brought. Um, and, and, and above all, I think you kind of set the, set the stage, laid the groundwork for um, how our superintendent should be in terms of openness with the board. Um, I don't think that there was ever any surprises. Um, you, you made a commitment to us that you would not, that we would never be surprised um, in terms of an incident. And if a kid was hit by a car, we knew about it the same day. If um, someone tripped and fell down the stairs, we knew about it the same day. And, and, and those things may seem like not important items, but Dr. Calla made sure that the board was informed on even the most simplest of things. And that's important because I think you have to have that trust built between a board and a superintendent. And I think that he worked um, to do that with us and, and, and made sure that we did not have um, any surprises. So. Um, I thank you for that. Now you got a week left. I'm hoping that you continue to stick to that, and I hope that we won't have any more surprises. But um, <laughs> I, I, I greatly appreciate your service. Um, the people of Kenya are really blessed um, that you have um, that, that you ha have worked and will continue to work and bring um, stability there. I'll also be interested to hear how the Kenyan uh, presidential election turns out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they appoint you uh, commissioner of education or something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Wally. Ms. Washington. <laughs> Ms. Washington. I didn't know 
if you're gonna let me speak, but I was gonna of ask course. anyway. <laughs> um, I would like to first, well, I'm speaking on behalf of all the students of the district. I would first like to start with Ms. Thompson. When I first came in here this year, I've been working with the district for like the past two years, but this year I'm actually student representative. But when I first walked in here, I was unfamiliar with the names of all the board members, but I always knew your name and you stood out to me, and I'm sure you stood out to a lot of other females and students in the district. You're very well spoken, and I'm, we will miss you. I didn't know, no offense to anyone else on the board, but I, didn't, I couldn't remember their names. I, met, I knew of Malik Evans, because he came to like a career fair, but you stood out to me the most, so thank you. To President Garcia, when I first met you, I was like, oh my God, he is so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Like, See? Like, 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 Somebody else agrees with you. <laughs> they don't. They don't. Not the babes. But I've learned, well, I've had strict teachers in my past, so I give you the utmost respect for that. So you seem, if you were to be a teacher, you seem like you would have very much control over your class. <laughs> <laughs> And to Dr. Kalla, I met you last year when you came, and um, well, this year. But to my school and to everyone in the community, I'm like the news. I have all the news. I'm here every night. I know everything in Central Office. So everyone came up to me. They're running to me. What do you think of the superintendent? What, what kind of guy is he? What, what do you know about him? And I described you as presidential. Ooh. Not, not to Bush or anything. Nothing to do with Bush. She is funny too. Like a leader, because just the whole dress and your wife was right by your side, and you both shook my hand, and we hugged, we exchanged hugs, and we exchanged words. And I was like, he's like, he's presidential. He's, he's, he's like a good man. I didn't, people come back to me, and that's the first thing that, and I still believe that you're a leader, and for all of you, whoever fills your position, we know who's going to fill your position, but you set high standards. And on behalf of all the students, we thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Washington. Well, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the board meeting November 29. So moved. Second. Is there any corrections to the minutes? I have a question, President Garcia. Question, Commissioner. I, I wanted to ask um, uh, Superintendent Calla uh, about his uh, role on the governor's pre-K committee. Where would that stand? Um, President Garcia to Superintendent Kayla. Well, uh, why don't we ask him during his report? That, that's fine with me. Fine, thank you. Uh, any other questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, we have no speakers addressing agenda items, so uh, we go then to Ms. Commissioner Elliott's question, Dr. Kala, in your report. No, do you want to know my future role? Is that? Uh, uh, yes, or, or, oh, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Uh, I'm on the currently, for those who, who don't know, I'm on the uh, Governor's uh, Children's Advisory Committee, and uh, I chair a pre-K committee. Um, I'm not quite sure what what my role will be in the future. Uh, I, I tend to believe that I was appointed uh, uh, to this committee uh, when the thought was that I'd be here for about 30 or 60 days. So the the thought is is that I I, I would continue on this committee. Uh, uh, because it really is not a function of my being uh, the superintendent. So I will have a conversation uh, with the governor's office uh, next week to see you know, what, what uh, they, they'd like as they're also changing leadership as well. Uh, there's uh, the leadership of the, of the advisory committee is moving on, so I think there's gonna be some changes. Um, a few other uh, uh, items. Uh, the, uh, for those of you who haven't heard, the University of Rochester has uh, uh, created Rochester's Promise, and this was announced at a press conference that I was able to attend last week. And uh, this is uh, really quite a tremendous uh, uh, event in that the University of Rochester is going to supply, provide uh, $25,000 scholarships to any Rochester City School student who attends the University of Rochester. Uh, so we think this is quite a significant event, it's quite a, uh, a significant financial outlay. One of the things that I said at the press conference was that I hoped 
that this would be an example to the rest of the colleges in the area to do the same. Uh, because it's one thing to uh, have uh, access to the University of Rochester, but it's also another thing to have access to more accessible colleges as well. Well, lo and behold, I had a meeting with uh, Tom Flynn at the MCC uh, last week, and he told me that they're working on, with his font with the Monroe Community College Foundation, uh, a very similar plan that, which would offer s full scholarships to any of our students uh, uh, any of our uh, kids who gr who graduate and go to the, to Monroe Community College, now we we are the largest uh, feeder of students to Monroe Community College. So this is this is an enormous enormous uh, uh, venture, and uh, we're told that the the money is there. So this isn't a pipe dream. Uh, and in fact, uh, he said, you know, I'd like you to to develop some criteria. Uh, for entrance for for the students, and uh, this was something that I wasn't going to let go. And I know I only have a few days left, so I made sure that I talked with Marilyn Patterson and Grant, and they they put it together very quickly. And he already has the criteria, so we want to make sure that this thing doesn't fall uh, through the cracks. This is uh, pretty exciting. So now we have two major colleges in the area that that are doing this, and I think the peer pressure will be very strong for the rest to follow. And this is very important that. Uh, uh, the promise to our our kids need hope, and 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 to to remove that big financial burden is a is a is just an incredible incredible uh, thing for our kids. So uh, we're very pleased that that is happening. I was also had the privilege of being on a, a panel the for the uh, Black Student Union at the University of Rochester this past uh, week, and uh, Malik was on the panel with me along with uh, two Rochester City School students. Uh, and it was put on actually by uh, graduates, uh, Rochester City graduates who now attend University of Rochester. So it was a, a, a really a great opportunity. It was total interchange. There were no speeches, uh, and uh, it was an interchange about uh, the, the 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 good, the bad, and the ugly of the Rochester City Schools and what we should do in order to uh, to improve from us from a student's point of view. So we got we got a lot of good information. Um, uh, last week as well, uh, uh, several of us attended a meeting at the Peace Baptist Church regarding apprenticeships. And this is also a, another very important issue in our community as we're, we're uh, um, approaching a facilities modernization plan uh, that eventually will, will be $1.2 billion. And it has, this, is, this will have an enormous impact on the economics of our community and on the labor force and on employing our own students and again providing hope through jobs through apprenticeships through vocations so we've had a lot of conversations in the last six months uh, with labor and uh, uh, this is uh, again one more effort in order to uh, you know provide viable uh, uh, occupations for kids when they uh, when they leave the uh, city schools <laughs> Um, I do want to congratulate Amy Zimmer, who is now leaving. Uh, uh, she's on uh, as one of the resolutions as uh, uh, leaving as a, uh, a staff member at School 41. But she was on the uh, the, the Biggest Loser, uh, the program, the Biggest Loser, and she lost 126 pounds. Wow! Uh, so she's a big winner. So we're, we want to congratulate her for for that. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Okay. Um, we, uh, I was able to uh, to uh, speak at uh, Leadership Rochester last Friday on the state of education in the city of Rochester. Uh, again, I try to make those conversations interactive, and we had a really good conversation with uh, members of the community, mem mem members of the uh, <clears throat> uh, Leadership Rochester, about again what uh, what can be done. Uh, to make uh, the school district a better school district. So that was also very, uh, 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 a very good uh, uh, program. Uh, I want to uh, recognize uh, there, these people will be voted, uh, will be, uh, <clears throat> voted on this evening. Um, I, I hope, uh, is, is, I think uh, she's here. Is Nyree, Nyree Strong here today? 
Nairi Strong will be, uh, is, uh, we're recommending her as the uh, Director of African African American Studies. So we want to recognize Nairi in the back there. And also uh, uh, Tony Robinson, who will, uh, is Tony here? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Tony will, uh, will be the uh, uh, program administrator for East High Evening School. Uh, uh, Tony, didn't we meet at like 5 in the morning? Uh, yeah. I, I, yes, on, on Black Friday, uh, Tony and I were crazy enough to be at Circuit City uh, waiting, to, waiting to get specials, of course, which were like sold out hours before. <clears throat> Did you get anything, Tony? Yeah, okay. <laughs> very, very smart. I came away empty-handed. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have, Commissioner. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Cal? Uh, yes, uh, President Garcia. Um, I just want to um, um, ask if we can have the uh, administration staff to look into this. There was an email going around with respect to scholarships at, at Harvard University. Uh, um, some of you may have seen that. But it was also in the newspaper that the University of Pennsylvania, I believe, or Penn State, was also giving uh, similar scholarships for low-income students. Is there a way in which we can develop some kind of relationship um, with Harvard and it's either University of Pennsylvania or Penn State that has these scholarships that are available um, so that when our kids are ready to go into college, uh, Harvard and either UPenn or, or Penn State may be uh, an option for our students, if we could look into that. Sure. Thank you. President Garcia. Commissioner White. Yes. Um, in the series of questions that I asked, I noticed that uh, Resolution 404 was pulled. I, I have some follow-up questions to that. Should I ask that now or wait until we get to that segment of resolution? Title of that, so I, the, the, the it, uh, I have it marked as resolution 404. No, the content. No, I don't have the original packet with me. I have I my just, question. What is it about? <laughs> oh, it's about um, uh, special education. Okay. I, I can ask the question. Oh, now. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. I know what okay. it is. Yep. Uh, President Garcia, would you prefer that I address it I, now since it's been let, pulled? Let's, let's have him address that now. Okay. Um, I noted in my question that uh, I, I wondered whether there had ever been an ev evaluation done of the special education system, uh, and if so, what were the results of that study? The answer, and again, as always, I appreciate the hard work of the staff, particularly uh, Kim uh, Dice Fawcett uh, who, and Ms. Barkley, who answered this question. But the answer was that uh, in 2005, as part of a blue ribbon work, the district special education spending was assessed by the educational management system. Additionally, the district reported there has not been an external evaluation of special education programming, organizational structure, accountability in at least 10 years. During that time, there have been several changes to the special education law in the U.S. and New York State. And, and I guess my natural follow-up question is particularly, Dr. Cowes, I know you're, you're sensitive to this issue, um, and the concessions that have been made during QA, that there is some reason to believe that African-American men have been misdiagnosed, and, and understanding that you've only been here for a short period of time, why have we not? Do you know why we haven't done an evaluation of our special ed system? No, I asked the same question. That's why I yeah. recommended that we have one. Uh, there, are, there, are, and, and it's really, it's not limited to that uh, I alone. It, I mean, that, that, that's, that's one of many, many areas of, of, uh, of, that we, of inquiry that we have to look at. And, uh, it's, uh, it's the distribution of students in the schools, you know, how we place students. It's the how we are uh, categorizing children across the board, uh, the, the labels that we're, that we're using uh, uh, with uh, children. Um, uh, the, uh, equal access uh, throughout the district. Um, so th these, are, these are issues that are, are you know, uh, compliance issues as well, sure. uh, compliance issues as well. Uh, so, uh, all of those absolutely have to be uh, addressed. It's a, and it, number one, we know it's a serious money issue. Uh, and and, and I, there's also a point that, that, that I, I hear continually, which really does need to be addressed. There's a, a thought out there that uh, kids are classified in order to get more money, okay? Let me, let me, let me put that one to bed 
okay? Mm -hmm. In order to get money, you have to spend it first, mm -hmm. okay? And you don't get it all back. So the, the thought that, that you know, we would classify a child in order to get more money is just, it's just factually incorrect because you, you, uh, you get high cost aid for the high cost placements for these, uh, the restrictive environment placements, but you don't get 100% of it back. So you have to spend that money first and you get it back later. So you're, 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 you're like floating alone too. You don't, you, you, you're not, you don't get the money uh, back until a year later in some of these cases. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's an important issue. But that also brings up another issue as to you know, our, our kids put in uh, uh, environments that are, are too restrictive. Are they put in environments that are not restrictive enough? Uh, you know, when we look at the violence in our schools and the types and the suspensions that we have, half of the kids who are suspended are, are, are or classified children. So uh, that alone uh, would, would, would pique the interest to say, I think we need a study here because this is not right. Uh, so they're, they're, uh, it's well overdue. Is, uh, Mr. President, just a brief follow-up question. Is one planned or are you, do you intend on making that suggestion to uh, Mr. Bazard? Now, you see, I had the, the uh, I pulled it. That was the review. The, that was the recommendation for a review. And that, that organization, uh, is experienced in doing urban uh, special education reviews. I had a conversation with Mr. Broussard, and he wants to bring an organization from New York City in, so that's why I pulled that, so that he would be able to, he has to live with this. So okay. uh, he said that he has a recommendation to make, so I would assume at the next board meeting you'll get another, a different recommendation. Thank you, Mr. President. President yeah. Garcia. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. As a follow-up, Dr. Calla, um, even though you may not have the whole history of special ed in the district, what explanation did you receive from staff as to why an evaluation has not been performed in so long? Uh, I, the, answer, the answer is basically uh, we don't know. Mm. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not an, uh, uh, I knew no, no one really has an answer as to why these things happen or, or don't happen. I think one of the reasons why, if I could, I could, uh, I, I could prognosticate on this, uh, is that the, Special education in this district has been under review in, un, in one way, shape, or form by uh, state and federal government in, in, in a variety of cases. So one would can't assume that, well, it's already under review, so you know, why, why do we need mm. to, to study it? Uh, wow. But as some, there's, there's nothing like a, a, a fresh set of eyes to look at things. So when I you know, come in, I also have a, a reference point about what special education has looked like in my experience and how it is implemented in my experience. And then I saw how it was done here, and I have some pretty strong ideas about what, how it should be done and how it shouldn't be done, and that immediately sparked the, the need to say, look, we need to, we need to look at this whole thing. Thank you. Well, I would just w add one well, thing. Go ahead. I would add one thing. I, I had, in the last year that I was in Fairport, I did it at Fairport as well. Mm. So it's, it's a very troubling issue in all schools. So that this is not indigenous to, to the Rochester City Schools. Thank you. Um, we'll move on then to um, uh, board reports. Uh, Ms. Washington, do you have a report? Yes, sir. I am very proud to say that our one-to-one -one fundraiser that I have mentioned for the past two meetings it actually took off today. So today, around 3, 4, 5 o'clock, we actually distributed the items that we've collected. We've put boxes in about nine schools, also in central office. And the room was a little bit smaller than this, but it had tons of cabinets and tables, meeting tables, long tables, and it was nothing but clothes, socks, hats, about at least 80 coats, slacks, boots, all sizes. And um, we had over 75 people come to get things that they needed to help them survive this winter. Many of the families were born to the United States, um, also low-income families who just didn't have it. And, you know, maybe that Christmas money that was going to be spent on a coat, it could be spent on something else now because they walked away with coats, hats, scarves, boots, socks, everything else that you can imagine. People walked away with garbage bags today. So we were very appreciative for that. On behalf of that, we have to 
thank Alberta Moss, who is the customer service coordinator at the Family Learning Center. That is where we actually held the event. Um, what else is new? We will start our mentoring program with school number 22 for the second year in the middle of February. We have all the student representatives and we will be mentoring the students with their transition from elementary school to junior high school. And we are still looking forward to our youth conference with the mayor sometime in January. Thank you, Ms. Washington. Uh, Commissioner Brennan, you get to say again I'm, that you're- I'm happy there. to repeat what I said earlier. <laughs> There's no, you. nothing additional. Go President, go. Dusty, I had a comment about our student reps report. Yes, okay. I, go ahead, Commissioner Thompson. I just wanted to say in my last board meeting, Ms. Washington, that you've really uh, been a pleasure to watch and listen to, and you've been um, a wonderful catalyst for the Student uh, Leadership Council, and, and I have been very appreciative of the way you've represented students, so thank you for your service. Commissioner uh, Elliott. You're not going to forget that name, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, President Garcia, the um, Board Governors Committee met on December, Monday, December 17th, and we discussed, uh, uh, well, we made, met a couple of times, actually, I should say. Um, we met um, to evaluate the board staff. Uh, there's going to be a, um, a resolution that comes forth as a result of uh, a meeting about uh, as a result of the evaluations of board staff. Um, we also um, are still collecting um, some of the board self-evaluations. Um, I'm, I'm uh, trusting President Garcia that we will have your um, evaluation <laughs> uh, before you leave, President Garcia. <laughs> or I take everything back I said about you. Um, we also talked to, I wanted to get a legal opinion on the appointment of board staff. Uh, in other words, what that meant was do we officially via resolution have to appoint uh, board staff? And uh, the findings were that we do have to um, legally appoint board staff and that we'll have those resolutions to come forth um, at, a, at a later meeting. Um, we also got a legal opinion on board staff inclusion in the super attendance employee group. Um, we um, requested the following items, the, uh, an appointment table with the start dates and salaries for all the board staff, and th there's going to be a forthcoming and to recommend it to be under new business, a resolution in reference to uh, a staffing um, issue. Um, we want to, uh, I just want to publicly uh, thank the uh, board staff who met with us and who were evaluated and we, we indicated to them in those staff sessions is that this was all new to us so that we want their feedback as well into the process so that we can um, improve what we're doing as, um, as evaluators of our staff. Uh, many of us do not come with that um, skill set, so we're looking at uh, having a consultant to help us with, with that, but also to get feedback from our staff in terms of uh, you know, how best to do it, what, what tools to use, and, and what have you. Um, the next meeting um, is going to be determined, but let me also publicly thank uh, my colleagues who serve with me on this uh, committee, uh, Commissioners Powell and Commissioners White. Um, I certainly appreciate the work that uh, they have uh, contributed to this, um, to this committee. Um, President, um, Commissioner Powell has always brought historical information for us that Commissioners, uh, Commissioner White and I uh, don't have, so that's been very, very appreciated. And um, Commissioner White always is the balanced um, view point person, if you will, you know, to have us to think uh, about things from different angles. So I certainly do appreciate um, their support and involvement on the Board Governors Committee. So thank you very much. President thank Garcia, you. if I could just comment on the report. Yes, please. It's your last meeting, come on now. <laughs> uh, I, I did wanna, at the risk of this sounding like a love fest, I do think it's important to, to, to recognize the good work of that committee. We are often criticized as a board for not getting things done. Uh, clearly, under Commissioner Elliott's leadership, 
we have had significant improvements. Um, when I came here, there was no orderly process for accepting questions, when those questions would be responded to. Uh, there was a significant, there was a very short period of time in which we had to review that infamous Friday package. Uh, as a result of governance, that changed. We now have two weeks to look at that packet. Um, additionally, when I came here, actually long before I came here, there was no review of employees, district uh, board staff employees. One, somebody <laughs> said. Uh, that came out of governance. Uh, Commissioner Elliott and the, um, the rest of that committee uh, poured through uh, some ideas about evaluations. So, uh, you know, not so much uh, a reflection on Commissioner Elliott, but again, it, it sort of being protective of the institution, we have to recognize what we do well. And there have been significant improvements in the governance of the Board of Education, and Commissioner Elliott deserves credit for that. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, Commissioner Power. What about me? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not asleep yet. I'll Commissioner Evans, I'm sorry. Uh, no report, brief report. Um, often the board is often criticized for um, different things sometimes not being open, but the board received uh, an award on behalf of Rochester Community Television uh, last Monday. Um, and um, I will give this to, to the board clerk to hang uh, near the board office, and it reads, Rochester Community <coughs> Television 2007 Community Producer Award, the Rochester City School District Board of Education, in recognition of your outstanding efforts to promote open government and community media. Um, as you know, we are um, an elected body that decided to um, go prime time. This is the best reality show going. Um, that's true. And, uh, and, and we got, and, and we've, we're recognized um, for, for our great productions through um, community television. So thank you, to, thank, thank you staff, um, board staff. Thank you, Tom Petronio. Um, thank you, Channel 15, for putting us on there. And guess what? Um, it may not make big news, but uh, city council is going to start going live in January. So we set a precedent that other elected bodies are picking up, ladies and gentlemen, and we got this award. And all, every, uh, all six of you should be proud for voting for that because that was a unanimous vote um, to, to, to go live and be televised. So congratulations to the Board of Education, and I'll give this um, award to the clerk to hang. Um, no, no, that's all I have, Mr. President. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Power. Thank you. I have two reports. The first is the Finance Committee report. Uh, the committee met on the uh, Thursday the 13th uh, to review the financial reports and resolutions 379 through 388 and resolution 412. Um, at this time I move uh, that the uh, board uh, receive the financial reports. So moved. Second. Is there a second? second. Oh, it's, it's been moved and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay, thank you. Um, resolutions 379 through 381 uh, are reference facilities, uh, and they come with um, the committee's recommendations. Resolutions 382, 383, and 385 are uh, procurement and supply resolutions, which also have the committee's endorsement. Uh, resolutions 384, 386, 387, 388 are being advanced without uh, a recommendation one way or another. And um, my records don't, in, and don't tell me whether resolution 412 was uh, approved uh, or advanced without recommendation by the committee, uh, but that is also uh, an item that went through the finance <coughs> committee. The next scheduled, um, we, we did put a finance committee on the schedule for Thursday, January 17th. Of course, the new uh, chair of the committee after our organizational meeting will certainly have the prerogative to change that if need be. But uh, it's tentatively scheduled for January 17th at 5.30 p.m. My second report is to close out our ad hoc committee on parent preference managed choice. The committee met uh, three consecutive months. Our last meeting was on Tuesday the 18th. And we have the following recommendations. Which, and that was ultimately the goal of the ad hoc committee. The, the first recommendation is that two particular points be 
re referred to the policy committee, uh, the first being to um, include zone improvement team language in that managed choice policy, the second to remove transition year language. Um, President Garcia, it is your prerogative to direct. Uh, uh, I will, yes, I will have those items directed to the policy committee. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The, uh, the next recommendation, um, it, uh, when justification for that, um, just for the audience, is that zone improvement teams had always been envisioned as part of the policy, and it was uh, something of a, an oversight uh, when the policy did get adopted that it w was not a part of the language of the, of the original uh, policy. With regard to the transition year language, obviously it is now um, extraneous. The, the transition years are, are long past and we simply don't need it taking up space in our manual anymore. The next recommendation is that the superintendent complete an evaluation um, of the implementation of this policy. The, um, using either an inside or an outside evaluation team and that the superintendent submit an outline of how this evaluation might be completed to the Quality Assurance Committee when it meets in January 2008. The, um, the administration staff essentially said, we know what data we have, we know what data you need, um, and uh, they suggested that it was the, the board's role to determine whether it be evaluated by an internal or external um, evaluation team. It was the opinion of the ad hoc committee that no, it was, it was very uh, securely in the role of the superintendent to make an, uh, a, a recommendation to the board how it wanted this evaluation to take place, internal or external, and, and by what consulting firm. So we simply ask that the um, the superintendent be directed to um, formulate a course of action or several courses of action to be taken to the quality assurance for final approval. If there's no objection, we shall direct the superintendent. Thank you. The last recommendation, um, and it really is only food for thought, is at, because it was not part of the charge of the committee. The secondary school choice process uh, uh, has was never under the purview of managed choice. It has, we have always had secondary choice, but it has n never been governed by a policy. Uh, so uh, the committee strongly encourages and urges that the superintendent look at the choice process as it considers any plans to improve the performance of our secondary schools. Um, and the data in other districts show that school choice process can have an impact on student achievement. So, sort of a non-binding recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, President Garcia. Um, I think I can get through QA without crying, because between Cynthia and me, we're going to start this reputation of black women and crying and comments and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so. <laughs> Quality Assurance met on December 20th. After reviewing the Frederick Douglass plan closing plan and the professional development plan for 2007 to 2010, the committee voted to recommend approval by the full board for both. Uh, the board was provided with these materials and additional copies are at your seat tonight. And we'll get to my request for, for uh, a vote in a moment. Regarding the Douglass closing, on the superintendent's recommendation, the board approved a plan on April 19th to close Douglas completely, effective June 2007. Two existing schools, the Northeast and Northwest College Preparatory Schools, were moved intact into the building that was Douglas. Parent information meetings were held in May on evenings, afternoons, and a weekend, and the then Douglas principal, Vicki Ramos, said that she and other administrators and counselors reached out extensively to parents regarding the process in writing, by phone, by email. Committee discussion focused on parent involvement slash engagement. The outreach efforts of Ms. Ramos and her staff were laudable and we appreciated the information because 
of the ongoing questions uh, we steadily receive regarding how accessible district schools are to parents. I move that the board approve the Frederick Douglass closing plan forwarded by the administration. Yes. Second. Uh, it's been moved the second. Any questions regarding the plan? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, professional development. The district's professional development plan for 2007 to 2010 must be submitted to the State Education Department and requires board approval. The plan delineates how professional development is aligned with content and student performance standards designed to demonstrate how classroom instruction, class, teacher, practice will be improved and assessed and is structured so that teachers have the opportunity to complete at least 175 hours of professional development every five years. We emphasize to administrators that follow-up is critical to ensure that skills learned in professional development translate into the classroom and into student achievement. We asked about professional development for paraprofessionals and Bente employees. Uh, Chief of Diversity and Leadership Michelle Hancock said her department is taking on that task and that professional development will be developed for these groups. I uh, make a motion that the board approve the professional development plan for 2007-2010. Is there a second? Second. Then second. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Finally, the SIR reports. The committee did not vote to forward the school's under registration review reports to the full board for approval. Reports were provided for the International Finance Career High School at Franklin, Jefferson High School, and Monroe High School. The plans must be submitted to the State Education Department. The SIR plans for each school were written by teacher slash administrator teams with input from parents. The improvements focus on literacy, math, school climate, student behavior, and graduation rates. Remedies include professional development, specialized programs for students, student materials, and technology. Parent engagement, or the lack thereof, is a recurring theme. Principals can assist the board by providing written evidence, even if it's anecdotal, regarding their efforts to engage parents. Concern about parent engagement is not what prevented the QA committee from forwarding the plan to the full board for approval. However, a large binder of information was provided to the committee for its review by administration two days before the meeting. And we understand that slowness on the part of the state was one factor in our untimely receipt of the information. But in the absence of Commissioner White and with respect to the volume of information provided, we determined that approval of the SIR plan should wait until January 2008 or later. Even though school board approval is required, the three schools began Im improvement activities at the beginning of this school year, so the lack of board approval isn't holding up work that each school committee and the superintendent felt was important. Um, that concludes my last QA report. I want to just pause and say thank you to the folks who have been involved with quality assurance over the years. We've had a different uh, composition from time to time. Uh, of the folks who are here on the on the dais, uh, Willa has served on QA with me. Uh, Cynthia Elliott, Van White is currently on it. Uh, Commissioner Brennan now serves on it. I think we can agree that we've probably had some of the longest meetings at QA. I think I mentioned long meetings in my remarks earlier, but uh, they haven't been without substance, and that certainly was one of the meetings where any member of the board or community could sit in and really get some insight into the workings of uh, and the rationale and the background of many of our programs and services. So, um, so uh, we won't generalize about long meetings. They can be helpful. And I also want to thank the staff uh, that supported QA. Again, over the years, uh, those people have changed, but uh, Jana Carlisle has served as the administration staff to QA. Uh, Cheryl Holloway, uh, Kim Dice Fawcett, uh, and we've had a number of members from the administration come before QA and provide valuable information, and I thank you for, for that. And uh, 
last but not least, I have to thank Linda Dunsmore. Uh, she and I have sat through many a breakfast at the Penguin where she's come forward and deciphered what we've covered a few days before and made sense out of it so that it was presentable to the board. And I thank you for that, Linda. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner White? Yes, the Audit Committee met on Monday, December the 17th at 5.30 p.m. All board members were invited to attend. During the meeting, we received the 2006-2007 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, commonly referred to as the CAFR. We also met with our independent auditor, Deloitte and Touche, on the results of our audit. The committee is seeking support from the board to accept the adoption of Resolution 413, which we will discuss and vote on later. Uh, Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner White. Any questions? If we know, we move on to uh, consideration of resolutions. I'll entertain a motion to approve Resolution 356 Is there a second? Uh, is, I'll move. Is there a move? So moved. Second. It's been moved. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Commissioner Brannan. Uh, questions on any resolutions, <coughs> Commissioner White? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, resolution number 372, I submitted a question. Again, I thank the staff for responding. Uh, this was a resolution that dealt with a behavior modification program that apparently uh, was previously used in Douglas. Uh, the answer that I got back was we had this program at Douglas, and the success rate was documented to be successful in avoiding repeated suspensions. Um, I do not have a track record for Monroe because it's just starting there. Again, Mr. President, my question was, uh, we're using this program in Monroe, and the answer was, we're using it because it was successful at Douglas. Uh, it had a successful track record that was documented, but my question, my natural follow-up question is, well, what was the success at Douglas? Uh, the, the answer just says, well, we had a success rate that was documented at Douglas, but I you know, uh, obviously I'm looking, obviously this was a, an issue of best practices, and I, I, the, the logical answer for me would have been, well, this was why it was successful at Douglas, and I didn't get that in the answer. There was no time between questions here to get a response? I, would, I think today you asked the follow-up question. Oh, no, I asked the follow-up question, I think, yesterday or a day before. But, but, but let me be clear. Uh, the question was, what was the assessment of this model? And the answer came back, it was successful at Douglas. It didn't, right. I, I there was really no answer. No, no. Well, that's what follow-up questions are for. And we did get the follow-up question today. And we, we got the question today. Well, uh, well fine. I'm just, I'm trying to make the point. It's fine. I understand your, your question uh, uh, and the answer uh, not fulfilling the requirement that you, that you, right. that you wanted. But the, the fact of the matter, we will get you that, that information. Uh, the, we uh, made contact with Vicki Ramos, and Vicki Ramos was out of her office and was, she didn't have the, the data in front of her, but she did provide uh, an anecdotal answer that, she, in addition to that, that she could provide uh, off the cuff. Uh, but we can provide that for you. Well, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate the fact that everybody is busy in their schedules. I, I merely wanted to, to make clear that uh, in assessing the question and answer, that when we ask questions like this, it's clear the answer it, that we need. It's our responsibility to ask follow-up questions. Well, well Mr. Period. President, so it's clear Excuse for... Excuse me, uh, Commissioner, I'm responding to your comment. Uh, uh, so that within a period of time that is reasonable, the staff has enough time to respond. Well, let me just say, Mr. President, I submitted this question in a timely fashion. I, I asked a reasonable follow-up question, which, I, again, I would respectfully submit I shouldn't have even had to ask, but I, I did, and I, I've been given an answer that it may take some time to get an additional answer. I, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm merely suggesting this was a reasonable question. I don't think the answer really answered the question. That's the only point I'm trying to make. Well, and the point That's I'm it. making that if he didn't answer your question, there were two weeks. No, there wasn't, Mr. President. This was a shorter time frame. We didn't, because we're having the meeting earlier, I guess because of the holiday season, we weren't given the normal time frame that I referred to earlier on. So, I, you know, no one's okay. pointing fingers. I, I just, I you wanted know. to know if we had an answer. And, 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 and I've, I've learned, Mr. President, we do not at this time. I can, I, I'll wait for the answer. Any other questions regarding this resolution? All in favor of approving resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I have some uh, no's. Go ahead. 357, 362, 
372, 373, 374, 375. I, and I, I don't know, the ayes have it, thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 379 through 381. So moved. It's been moved, is there a second? Second. Second. It's been sec uh, properly moved and second. Uh, any questions regarding those resolutions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 382 through 385. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved and second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 386 through 388. This is information technology. Anybody move those? So moved. Second. And properly moved and second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes. No. Commissioner Elliott. Um, 386, 387, 388. Okay. Fine. You vote no on all okay. of them. You got that vote? Uh, Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 389 through 414. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. I have some no's. Go ahead, Commissioner. 399, 400, uh, 401-410. It's done small, you got those? Thank you. Uh, that does the resolution. Uh, we have no unfinished business, so we move on to new business. Uh, there's no new business, so. Uh, yeah, there, there is. Um, just clarification, did we, um, so there was, let me just ask this. Four, did we just approve 411? President Garcia, was that a part of? We, the, yes. 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 yes, we approve resolution 389 through 414. Oh, can I can I ask a question about 411? Or it's already over? passed. All right. Thank you. Um, so there is new business. Go ahead. There is um, President Garcia. I'm interested in uh, for your consideration introducing a, um, a resolution in reference to an employee um, matter. Let's just see that in an employee matter. Um, a board staff employee matter. Um, so I make that motion that we um, take care of this under new business. Uh, it is in reference to compensation uh, of an employee, so I'd make a motion um, to accept. Uh, you, you'll have the resolutions in front of you. Is there a second resolution. to that resolution? Second. It's being yeah. properly yeah. doing second? Yes. If there are no questions, we move to approve it. If there are questions, then we'll have to have an executive session Question. set up for next month. Which uh, resolution are we referring to? Um, it's the res okay, res I think I have it. This okay. is yes, okay. it's right. It's in front of you. Since, uh, here we know. Yeah, there will be some questions. Well, then uh, uh, this motion. Uh, so we need to. So we or a mo either a motion to go into executive session or a motion to table one or the other. I'll entertain a motion to table the resolution until the next regular scheduled meeting. Second. So uh, no, so I'm entertaining the so motion. Moved. Excuse me. It's so been moved. moved. Is there a second? Yes. Second. It's been moved and second. There's no discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Two no's. Two, the ayes two, have no, it. Three no's. Excuse three. me. Three no's. Three. The ayes still have it. Okay, um, so we'll move on to speakers in other than agenda items. I'll remind the speakers, you have three minutes. Uh, when the bell sounds, please conclude and walk off the podium uh, and allow the next person to have their three minutes. Uh, if you follow the rules, you will not be interrupted and, uh, and will be treated with respect, as usual. Uh, you have the... I, I beg your pardon. I just have a, a point of order. Point of order. Um, the motion to table 
My understanding was that Cynthia Elliott seconded it. There was no motion because the board president so cannot she, motion. No, no, she made, she, the motion. she made the motion. Commissioner Thompson oh, you seconded. seconded. Yes. Thank you. I, You're that's welcome. All I needed. I, you know me, I get hung up I, on process. I know, I know you. <laughs> no problem. At first, she seconded. So um, the first speaker uh, we have is uh, Mr. Charlie Richardson, followed by Ms. Lovely Warren. Please conclude, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. I'd like to welcome our city council person, Ms. Lovely Warren. I was eating dinner, I heard on the news one of the most derogatory statements from one of our member, from one of your members. I was truly offended. It reminded me of a time when Bob Lonsbury caught former Mayor Bill Johnson a monkey. For centuries, the word buffoon, when referring to African Americans, was likened to calling them a nigger. 
or a monkey. It is a word that slave owners use to degrade and to hurt. It is a word that was used to refer to white actors in the 1900s that painted their face black and danced around the stage like idiots and mo mocking black people. To hear this word used to refer to another human being is unacceptable, and I believe that Ms. Powell owes this community an apology. It is okay to disagree with someone or to criti criticize another's behavior. However, it is not okay to destroy their character or to demean them. The fact is that instead of going over to Wilson Magnet where I attended school and asking many who has been a century there for many years, for more than 20 years, how much she makes, you chose to degrade another individual. You are trying to compare apples to oranges when you compare today's cl cl clerk typists and paraprofessionals to secretaries that have been around for more than 20 years. Before you step out to say she is wrong, compare the paycheck of many, a century, who has been around for 20 plus years in the trenches with the students, a mother, a grandmother to those students that have none, to the paychecks of those secretaries that have been around for 20 years. That is where the discrepancy lies. However, sometimes we are so busy trying to shoot the messenger that we miss the message. Instead of responding to another commissioner's actions in the media, why don't you respond to the fact that 70% of our students aren't graduating? Respond to those students from teen empowerment that spoke at the zero tolerance meeting with Ms. Washington yesterday that said they don't have books and they feel like some teachers, not all teachers, some teachers, are not educating them. Write them a letter explaining to them the reasons why you feel like they are getting a great education when they feel like they're getting a second-rate education. That is what, what they stood up and told us in this community from their mouths. We, and I include myself in this, have Please to conclude, focus. Ms. Warren. I will. We have to focus on our job, and I include myself, because our children have spoken. I heard them. Did you? Uh, Mr. Ron Ring. Um, Gloria Winston Arsag. She's here. She is here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I don't really do this anymore, but I had to come out of retirement to address what I heard from this last board meeting. And all I can say is, well, uh, how quickly we forget. How quickly we forget where we come from. Much has been said in this community about name calling, and again, the former mayor being called an orangutan. And I think Imus even got fired for the derogatory statements that he made. Gina Six is a symbol today of how tired black people are of being called names. I'm not here to defend Cynthia. She's a woman and can handle her own. But because your letter went publicly with a word in it referring to her as a buffoon, I think you should be fired or retired. That's what I think. I did not vote for you. I think Howard Eagle should be sitting in your seat because I know one thing about him. He's a little bit more culturally sensitive to what comes out of his mouth or is put on a piece of paper that hurts people. And I'm not one of those people that sweeps things under the rug anymore. I used to play that game, but I'm 62 now. And for me to come here and be here tonight because your words in that letter left me in pain, even though it wasn't directed at me personally. We, it's, we've just had enough of that. I've had enough of it. And I wanted to come tonight publicly to say, I think you owe Cynthia Elliott an apology. And I think it should be public since your words went public. But I understand politics. And I understand why that letter had to go to the union. 
the people that help support you. I understand you have political aspirations, and whatever your next step is, you want their support. But why aren't you outraged about the graduation rate that you sit here and represent for 10 years? Why aren't you outraged about our babies dying out there in that street because they can't read or write? Why aren't you outraged about the employers leaving this community because we cannot produce a workforce for them anymore? I grew up here. I was educated in the city school district when the teachers were teaching, okay? So I know what I'm talking about. If you're concerned and you're outraged and you want to write about something, write about that. In conclusion, the only thing I have to say is, it's not always the cream that rises to the top, Willa. Sometimes it's scum. Uh, Mr. James Thompson. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, Commissioner Akala. I came to talk about my wife, Shirley Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I mean, this is right there. Right there. Yeah. I want to just indulge myself for a couple of minutes, three minutes. <laughs> and um, speaking as a family member for my son Aaron, rest of the family, a member of the community, I've kept my mouth shut over the past eight years, haven't talked a whole lot. And then I asked Shirley questions, and she says, well, that's confidential, so I don't know what's going on anyway. But uh, Shirley started many years ago trying to work to get the parents involved uh, through um, various groups in the community. And I want her to continue that. Uh, so I want you to know that she's not going to stop. I, I wouldn't be able to stop her anyway. Um, she was approached to run for the board years before she started, but before she actually ran, but then uh, the kids were probably not quite ready for her to do that. So now life changes. The, we go through different phases. It took courage. It takes courage for all you board members to do what you do, to step out and say what you say, and you're going to get criticized, as we can see, for saying things. One thing Shirley has stood for in her years on the board has been for people to try to, to listen to each other. And I think that's very important. Um, even though she's often been in an uphill battle and been a lone voter against or for something, uh, she stood her ground, but with decorum. And I hope that other board members will take that to heart. You know, there, there's a movement, as you know, among some people to, to get rid of the board. They have the board run by the mayor. And I think it's only when board members work together uh, as, as from what I've seen, that's what Shirley wants the most, for people to work together on the board to put aside their differences and work for children, that the board will get somewhere in that danger of having the board <laughs> co-opted by various forces won't happen. Um, people need to actually play the roles they play. So when someone calls and asks for something, uh, when a parent calls and asks to have a certain service, I notice that Shirley will tell them, well, go talk to your principal or go talk to this person and follow the, the, the prescribed routes. One should be able to do this, and the board needs to make it clear, it needs to funnel away for people to actually do what they need to do and, and that we don't feel that there's a bureaucracy stopping us at every point in the way. So I hope you'll take that to heart. Uh, that's what I see as one of <laughs> Shirley's. I don't want to speak for her, obviously. That's what I see as one of the things that she wants to do. Uh, the board can achieve. And thank you, uh, Pres um, Superintendent Kala. Uh, thank you, Domingo Garcia. And thank you, all of you board members, for your courage. And let's fly together and make Rochester a wonderful, continue a more wonderful place. Thank you. Thank you. The last speaker for tonight is uh, Mr. Adam Rybansky. Dr. Rybansky, is he here? No, he's not. So that concludes the list of speakers. President, I would like to, yes, uh, Commissioner Elliott. Yes, I just wanted to, I, I, I was remiss in my comments for, with uh, 
for Dr. Cal, and I'd already expressed my um, comments for President Garcia, but also want to express my comments for Commissioner Thompson. I was remiss in that, and I do apologize for that up front, but I um, do appreciate your leadership for um, the Quality Assurance Committee. You know, sometimes I can go off on there. You, you know, provide the leadership to, to make sure that the meeting is running um, smoothly. You know, that's my passion uh, that, that comes out. And so um, you were, you, your leadership wanted uh, to for all for us to each one of us to hear the other and I really do appreciate that and thank you so very much and uh, you know hope that you will be in some capacity uh, involved in this community because this community certainly does need more people to be involved um, in the workings of this community and particularly in the 14621 community so I thank you so very much for the efforts that you've given us on the board thank you thank you thank so you. much President Garcia Point of personal privilege. Uh, Commissioner Power. Um, some things don't need a, one to have call attention to it, but I will, unfortunately, the, both of the speakers have left. I'd like the audience to take note that I remained in my seat at all times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next organizational meeting, uh, well, the, the 2008 organizational meeting of, of the board would be January 2nd when the new uh, uh, um, board members will be sworn in also the new officers of the board will be elected as well as all committee chairs uh, the regular business meeting will be on January 24 at, at 6 30 p.m. here if you like additional information please see the web pages at uh, the city school district um, um, if, uh, or you can call if you like to speak at the next regular uh, board meeting. You call this uh, city school district and ask to be put on the list. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Happy New Year. All right. We'll see you next year.